I think one thing Angry Titans had better than I would I'm not even embarrassed to say, but I better than any contenders team out there or NA Academies or anything was that everyone who was in that team, we became a family. And that's not even like a, it's not even like it's serious. Like we really became very close friends, all of us, like looking out for each other all the time, living together. Um, we, you know, we, we were kind of like, uh, how do you say it? A Korean mentality at times where we would grind 11, 12 hours a day, every single player. Welcome guys, another episode of the Player Hustle here. We have Evox and uh, he's, a, he's a Flick support. He's from Europe. He has someone stalking him in the background right now, but other than that's that, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, Grandma Evox. The, the yep. one who taught him Diana. Now, I, I have a question for yep. you. I noticed your, your username here, Efox, has a lot of Xs. How come you stuck with the Xs and maybe not put like OW at the end or, you know, like more standard? Like, how did you develop, develop that? Okay, so that's actually a pretty funny question. But it goes back to League of Legends when I used to play League of Legends. My name used to be Arctic Fox. That's why it stands for A Fox. And um, uh, I was a kid back then, and I got banned on my main account. So what I did was I made a new account called, uh, for short, AFOX. And when I typed in AFOX with the one X, it looked so short and ugly. So I just put an extra X to it. Oh, yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking about Twitter. You have like five Xs there. But Twitter was just because <laughs> every single X was taken. <laughs> and I think the OW thing looks pretty yeah. basic. So yeah. I was like, I'm just gonna keep pressing an X until you know it's not taken anymore. <laughs> okay, that's that happened. yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. I mean, it definitely sticks out. Definitely sticks out. So, how did you feel about uh, transitioning from over uh, from a league to Overwatch? Uh, before that, I used to be a CS:GO player as well. So I used to be good at both games. I played at a pretty high level, mm -hmm. and. I was good at FPS and I was good at like League of Legends, which is mobile, I guess. And um, then when Overwatch got released, my friend said, oh, you really have to try o uh, Overwatch because I think it's a game that would suit you. I like told him no, no, no. And then after a while, uh, eventually I tried the game and I kind of fell in love with it real quick. It's kind of, you know, it was kind of what he said. It's a mix of both. So I liked it, strategic and FPS. Mm. What, was, uh, what was it that got you into competing? Was it friends or maybe um, the game itself or tournaments or? Since I've been a kid, my dream was to always be a professional something with gaming. So if it were to be a game developer, to game tester, to, you know, streamer, uh, YouTube, uh, making YouTube videos or a professional player. And um, as I grew older, I realized that I was pretty good at games and, you know, I would always get higher rank, uh, high ranks and stuff. And I have a really competitive mindset so i was like at a certain point i when i started playing overwatch i got really high ranked and stuff and i started to play in a team called vivis adventures and from there on you know it progressed progressed until me wanting to play competitively full-time mm. how was it to get into vivis adventure because i remember back in the day you know it, you, you guys quite made a, a name for yourself so to say not only because of vivis adventure like the, the game the mini game or whatever it's it's also because of the results you got how did yeah. you how did you even get to that team because like did you did you know people from beforehand in there or yeah. so it it's a funny story again in season two back when i was like i was diamond because i didn't play season one at all mm -hmm. and i started off as diamond but i grinded myself from diamond to 4.2 no 4.3k in that entire season and for the 3k back then in season two was pretty big you know it was top 50 top 40 yeah. and um while i was doing that grind in like between diamond and masters i got to um i, I met lulzish and elivo in a comp game and they were really funny to play with so we added each other and they kind of had like the similar mindset of you know uh competitive players and stuff we started like back then triple uh, uh triple stacking mm -hmm. and playing more and more and more and we all got high ranked eventually they got they made vivis adventure which was a full swedish team and the flex support back then was a guy called bum and um 
so I got left out, and I was just playing with another mixed team. It was called Squid Squad. And uh, when Bum uh, decided that he didn't want to play competitive Overwatch anymore, um, they were going to look for another flex support. And Lil Sich and Elivo, like, uh, like, you know, they upped me really hard, even though I wasn't Swedish. So then I got a tryout. I did good. They picked me up. And then we became like this little underdog team that, you know, uh, we never won something besides the GoForce. We never won something big, but we always did damage in tournaments, like to these, you know, tier one, tier two teams that were there back then. We would like take maps off them or sometimes even win, which was pretty fun. Mm. How was it? How was it going up against those teams? Like, uh, you know, as an underdog, did you take experience from League of Legends and CS:GO or OCS, or was it more like the first time ever? You know, you go up against really good teams. Now, before that, in League of Legends, I played against big names as well. Same in CSGO, I always played against big names. So for me, it was less stressy, but it was definitely more... Um, Overwatch was at the start of the game, right? So what happens is that in these other games, I knew the platform to, get, to go pro or tier one is so big, you know, to get an LCS or, uh, you know, to get in, uh, in the tier one scene of CSGO. That's so hard. Because it existed for so uh, for so many years, while in Overwatch it was just starting, so I was more nervous because for me it was like you know if I go hard right now I can get in really quick, mm -hmm. and so Vivi's Adventure was kind of like that team where I was pretty nervous, uh, like going up against these pros. Also because one of the things I took from CS:GO and League of Legends was the big names like I I'd say Misfits or. Um, Dignitas, Rogue, like all these teams, right? They're big names in CSGO and League of Legends. So automatically, because I was pretty unexperienced, when I played against them in Overwatch, I would rate them just as high, while they were actually pretty new players as well, but they were, you know, newcomers in a good team already. Mm. So yeah, mm. it was like unexperienced, but I gained a lot of experience out of it as well. Yeah, It's too bad that it's pretty hard for, for players that are coming in the scene right now to get the same experience that, you know, everyone would get back when there was an even level yeah. of competing. Would you, would you say they, they can maybe get a different type of experience? Because now you have the open division and contenders and stuff, and it's, a di how do you say, you still grind a lot, but it, it's obviously not the same strength of opponents, and uh, you just get a different set of skills uh, that you develop like uh, mental fortitude or or that grinder mentality i think right now you have a better chance to go pro because of how it's set up i mean pro in the meanings of getting in tier two and maybe getting a paid spot that's what i mean by pro mm. because it is harder now to get in tier one though well back then it was easier if you just got a good team for example, Angry Titans, right? At its GOAT speak, if there was no gap between Tier 1 and Tier 2, we would have, like, up in the ladder really high. We would have been amongst the best teams, and then, you know, from there on, drop, 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 but we would have made that peak, right? Mm -hmm. But since there's, like, this gap between Tier 1 and Tier 2, we can't do anything, you know? We, we were at the top, and these um, Overwatch League teams and stuff, you, you can't compete against them. So the best of Tier 2 have a harder time to get in Tier 1 but for all the rookies out there and stuff, they have an easier time to learn the game, learn uh, the competitive scene, you know, getting into open division and contenders. It gives them a lot of experience, um, you know, and start off, uh, how do you say it, building up slow. While back in the day, it's kind of like CSGO, right? Where you have to pop off, like, you have to be really good, like, and beat these tier one teams that, are, that have been together for so many years. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, did you feel like uh, getting into uh, the World Cup uh, for Belgium in uh, 2017 helped you a lot, or is it something that was more short-term gain and didn't really snowball later on? Nah, the, the Team Belgium thing, it was extremely fun. I loved, my, uh, I loved the time I spent in America and the experience I got there, which was playing on stage, but um, our team was really... You, we had Logics and Spree, but me and Bot were kind of off-rolling all the time. And then the other two players, uh, Bruder and Senpai, they, I mean, you know, they weren't close to the level to compete against some of the players that were on stage. I mean, I would even say back then, I wasn't even ready f to compete on stage against these players, right? But um, I could handle myself pretty well, you know, have like little pop-off moments and stuff happening. 
Mm. Um, but it, it was more of a fun thing than experience. I mean, I visited America for the first time and stuff. It didn't really do much with my career because I got signed to Angry Titans um, just mm. before as I left to a World Cup. So it mm. didn't have much impact. So the the way uh, uh, so when when I hear uh, you know that it didn't do much for the career, uh, I assume you mean in terms of getting better offers or better teams, spots, trials, etc. Right? Yeah, I didn't like honestly. We like, I mean we didn't even oh no we didn't even win a map. Like for us, there was like nothing you gained out of it. You didn't get mm. experience out of it. You didn't like stage experience. You can't t really count it because you got stomped every single map. So it's not like you like learn something. Um, what about media? Media that you gained, like streaming, you know, brand awareness. Maybe, I mean, I did I, you focus I on it? Any of it? Yeah, I tried. I mean, I tried to stream right after it. I tried to promote myself as like the World Cup player and stuff, but it didn't really do anything. Like I mm. think Belgium was too low level to have been anything, you know, in, in besides Spree and Logics, because they were already popping, right? Mm. So since they were already popping, it would give them this extra advertisement. For the players that weren't really, uh, didn't really have a name back then, it didn't really impact much because we didn't impress anyone as well. Was it the same in the local scene, like within Belgium only? Honestly? Um, or maybe I, no impact even in... Uh... Within the I, scene, I, honestly, like I have no clue about the Belgium scene at all. Like, I think it's n I know there's a Benelux scene, but even that in Overwatch is very small. Um, so I don't think it had because I don't think it even has a Belgium scene at all. Mm. I mean, it might have some fans, you know, some that I don't even know about. And thank you for being our fans. But mm. Mm. so after after uh, the World Cup, you went into. Uh... Uh, Angry Titans. You also had a new own type of ownership, right? You had a a CEO for the first time, or you know, for compared to a previous adventure. What did you feel like you gained r right off the bat, and then what did you gain in long term in terms of like uh, tools, you know, for for the mind, you know, mindsets, uh, ideas, etc. As a player, what did it help you? In, in what, which way it benefited uh, you? So the moment I joined Angry Titans, the the instant thing I felt was discipline. Um, because, but this is something that's inside of me. I I don't think it happened to every player, but for me it was kind of like I'm in an org right now. I'm representing, you know, uh, the name Take TV slash Angry Titans. I'm playing here, so I gotta be disciplined, show that I behave well and stuff like that. So it instantly made me like mature faster as a player um, because I started to think about, you know, what to say, what not to say, how to be nice, you know, never be toxic, um, you know. And uh, understand that uh, I'm part of this brand, you know, and mm. that that's what did it instantly. In the long term, I mean, they did so much for me; it's insane. So, I mean, they teach me how to be just a better person, a better player. They teach me how to be a leader because I got kind of put on the spot after a while. So I started to be the leader of Angry Titans. Um, I was kind of the I, I was like the communication between the team and the org so me and dennis have an insane relationship like he's a great manager he has done so much for me and um i mean i i can't even uh say how much they did for me it's really a lot mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. they helped me a lot did it feel like you started seeing a a pattern in how you develop as a team and how other organizations develop as well you know not not organizations themselves but players within like do you see a certain common thread you know in, in the way teams look at scrims the, the way teams look at tournaments or preparation personal think, preparation etc i think one thing angry titans had better than i would i'm not even embarrassed to say but i better than any contenders team out there or na academies or anything was that everyone who was in that team we became a family and that's not even like it it's not even like it's serious like we really became very close friends all of us like looking out for each other all the time living together um we you know we we were kind of like uh how do you say it? 
a Korean mentality at times where we would grind 11, 12 hours a day, every single player, like, it, not one, not two, like, every single one, because we all wanted to win so bad. We all mm. wanted, wanted to prove ourselves so bad and supporting each other uh, through, through good and, and bad times. And it, it was, you know, we were known in the EU scene as well as this family team. Like, everyone knew us, like, we would back each other up so hard that you know other teams for example would have more a professional attitude where they'd be like okay when we go to scrim this is work for us and stuff and you know after that everyone just goes their own path right for us it wasn't like that for us like before scrim we wake up we would just eat something together then we would practice we would uh, talk uh, like make jokes and stuff after practice we would sit together you know have fun uh, play some board game or go watch a movie in like the home theater that Take TV has. Man, we would non-stop be bonding or go on a dinner all together. It didn't matter if it was like a special day, like someone's birthday or, or not. Like we would legit just look at each other and be like, "Guys, let's treat ourselves today on a dinner or something." We just go out to on a dinner tonight. Mm. It was That's... pretty much always uh, team thinking. Then you were like in a team mode, right? Non-stop. Like uh, it didn't matter where we go. We were talking about Overwatch. It didn't matter. Like, we we go to like I don't know if we went to like for a smoke. Some of us smoked. We were talking about Overwatch. We went to to eat dinner. We're talking about Overwatch, and it's it's something that has an advantage over people that didn't live together because people, you know, usually they take like one or two hours to vod review stuff, right? We vod reviewed or slash like. Uh, theorized every single second because we didn't do anything else. We just legit, when we were going anywhere, we were talking about how to do, improve and what to do better and stuff. So it was kind of an advantage. And we liked doing it. So that's mm. the thing. Mm. We kind of had that advantage. So since you liked it uh, and like it was just a natural thing, a pos positive thing, you never really ran out of material, you know, so to say, to talk about, right? No. Okay. Because then, yeah. oh, go on, go on. We we came up with new ideas as well. Like our first time in the middle of goat season, where we just pull out an ash goats comp, or the strat we used to do where we send the diva to kill the zen while we rush the Rhine. You know, all of these strats they didn't come up from us watching vods and be like, "Yo, we gotta try that." No, it developed of us walking around and we'd be like, "Dude, what if we just pick ash and ash goats uh, in goats meta?" Like. Think about it, like, these guys have been playing GOATs for two months, or, I mean, two seasons, sorry. And what if we pick Ash GOATs? Even if it isn't better than playing D.Va, these guys just don't know how to react. They'll just take damage. They don't know what, how, what to do. It's like picking something they never thought about. Mm. That's how we just came up. And we did that by just talking with each other nonstop. Mm. And we, had so, yeah. we had so many weird ideas that we never brought out an officials, but we had moments in scrims where we tried goats with Symmetra and stuff, where we were like, just beam the shield until the shield destroys, and then we kill everyone. Like, we tried out so much just because we theorized. Yeah. Do you feel like it's, it's kind of anti that right now in Overwatch in general? Like, it, the meta is set so hard, and then uh, either team is being lazy, uh, maybe their style is not to be creative, uh, yeah, because that, it's dependent that, on personalities and stuff. Do you feel like it's that, the same? That's a big thing. I, the way I explain this to people when they ask me this is everyone are followers and then there's one team that have two or three players that are really good at this certain hero, right? And they make a comp around that, they start destroying, and then all these followers, they swap and they follow that team. Say, Shanghai Dragons, when they won against uh, with, with their, you know, Fire Mercy comps and their triple DPS comps against GOAT, all of a sudden, GOAT wasn't good anymore. And everyone started playing that. Even though there had been some nerves, you know, it's still like goats was still the thing. Then after that, you had like the Sombra goats happening. And in EU contenders, you had something really big that happened was this one trick team called Clockwork Vendetta. They just, they just made a team with all the one trick players and they started destroying every goats comp. Yeah. Dude, I, and all of a sudden, people yeah. started to play their comp. It's just how it is. Yeah. I, I always, always would think it's kind of hilarious like how people co copy their comp when they don't really know exactly why it works for example clockwork even data didn't even scrim in open division like they enter contenders exactly. without scrimming like you just wake up 
uh, I don't know, take the ha hair to the side a bit and then uh, maybe uh, like clean the eyes a bit and then go in game and, and pop off and win. Just be good because yeah. they played their hero for seasons and they would just destroy. Yeah. And then people automatically think that's the meta. But here, mm. on, my, uh, on, on their defense though, um, they played um, very OP heroes after the nerfs uh, Blizzard did to like GOATS heroes, you know? Mm. So they, they, I mean, GOATS was meta for like, what was it, like two years almost or more or less? I don't know. It was for a long time. Yeah. And Blizz like the way Blizzard nerfed GOATS was by buffing other heroes in the beginning. So instead of like nerfing one or two GOATS heroes like Brig or something from the start or remaking her like they did at the end, they started buffing all these like Torb heroes like mm. May and stuff. They buff, 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 buff. And eventually, you know, they tweaked a little bit the GOATS comp, but these other heroes that they buffed, they, they were just on another level that, you know, all of a sudden, these one tricks, they just started to shine. They yeah. just come in there and they start to destroy everything because that hero is just dumb. And they have way more experience than us playing it. Yeah. Yeah. So now, with all the experience you've gained in Angry Titans, Vivis Adventure, Team Belgium, uh, just ranked streaming, you know, everything. How are we going to put that? Oh, how are we going to apply that into 2020 to make a bigger name for yourself or achieve something more for yourself? Like, what do you want to achieve in 2020 and how will you do it? Uh, 2020 is going to be a big year for me. Um, I'm going to give it my all. Uh, I'm going to stream here and there, but I'm mo mainly going to focus on um, contenders and winning it all. I, I am not focused on winning EU only or something. I Not even Atlantic. Like I just want to win Gauntlet next season. And I'm going for that. It's my number one uh, priority. Like, since there's no way for me to say or to have that bridge telling me, oh, you'll be an owl if you do this. Nah, it doesn't exist. You know, unfortunately, it doesn't matter how many results you get, uh, like back-to-back -back finals or win a final. Um, owl teams barely look at EU. So the only thing you can do to prove yourself right now is go hard with a team and just win the international events. And that's what my pure goal is. 2020 is just going to be grinding so hard and trying to win it all. Mm. What's, uh, what's uh, your social media? Where can people look at you? Where can they go? And, like When they think, oh man, I wish I had some AFOX right now. I wish I, wish I could spec his POV when he plays Pugs and, and just is hilarious. I, I wish I could see him <laughs> pop off on Zen. Like Where do they watch you? Uh, I have a stream. It's twitch.tv uh, slash afox af0x. There, I didn't go six S's. Mm -hmm. uh, X's. Uh, I just went zero X. Um, you can follow me there. I will start streaming uh, this upcoming year more. I didn't do it last year because it was pretty chaotic. Um, I was like also like the team leader and stuff. It made me very exhausting. Uh, exhausted. Like I couldn't like scrim, do all like help coaching and stream i would just burn out mm. um but this up, up and coming year i have um i have some good plans coming up and just follow me on twitter i think uh, it's a fox with six x's if mm. you follow me on twitter um i will always give you updates on when i'm gonna stream or when i'm not streaming or you know in general when i'm playing officials or not mm. whenever i do something in game uh, twitter will give you guys an update do you have any any last last topic or question or comment or anything that you just happen to think about that you want to you know bring it to light so to say mm, not really um i want to thank you for having me and i think what you're doing is really great and it's good content so oh I, no dude the pleasure is on me the pleasure is on me for you being open you. to this and uh, i'm just really happy to to do this i and, appreciate uh, that hope you have a great new year thanks so much for watching everyone thanks. at home and thank you, yeah. folks, for being here. Happy New Year.